Hi, I'm Charlie Thorburn. Welcome to Mordor Gun Dogs. Going to give you our weekly update with Waffle. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a recap with him and just reiterate the fact that, you know, he's he has good days and bad days. I feel like this morning he's come out, he's having a bad day, so that'll be quite useful for you guys to see that, you know, he's been making really good progression. Uh, and then, you know, some days it just all goes wrong. And that's how it works. You're not going to have constantly getting better and better. Like none of us work like that. We have bad days, we have naughty days, we have disobedient days, so do our dogs. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna head off down here with Waffle and uh, if he's naughty, we'll correct him. If he's good, we'll encourage him and just remind you where, where he's at. So for those of you not seen him before, Waffle is a um, golden cocker that we bred here. He's about just probably coming up five and a half, six months old now. I will try and remember his date of birth for the next video. Um, and Waffle is already destined to go and live in, uh, in America with some a really lovely family who've had dogs from us before. People often say to me, oh, no, no, I want to get a puppy because I, I want to do it myself. And, and that's great. And I'd never discourage someone from getting a puppy and training themselves. But I think often people forget how much work it is, how much um, knowledge and skill you have to have to get it really, really good. Everyone's got this dream of, yeah, I'm going to train my dog and I'm going to be able to go up Munro's and through fields and across the countryside and through the town and my dog will never need to be on a lead and they'll never do anything wrong and they'll always stay nice and close and that is the goal that's what we're all aiming for but you've sometimes got to be realistic about whether you are able to achieve that with your dog on your own even on your own with some help or sometimes you make the decision people make the decision just to buy one that already does it some people will say oh but that's cheating that's that's a cop out i don't buy a broken car and fix it okay i want a car that works if I need to buy a house, I get a lawyer to do it for me because I don't know how to make sure all the legal work is all done correctly and that I don't get duped. If I want to build a house, I get a builder to build it because again, if I built it, you know, it might fall down. Dogs are kind of the same. So it's, it's a sort of a, it's a concept that a lot of people don't have and they don't necessarily think about that you can even buy a dog that's already trained. But um, one thing I can tell you is that we've never ever had a customer bought a trained dog who's turned around and said, yeah, I made a mistake. Next time I'm gonna get a puppy. Lots of people, however, get a puppy and then they go, oh God, that was a nightmare. I'm gonna get a trained one next time. Why didn't I just do that the first time? So it's just food for thought. And I certainly wouldn't tell you which one's best for you, but it's just to, to think about it in a logical way rather than an emotional way. Because the other thing people think is bonding. People think, oh, but if I don't get a puppy, I'm not gonna bond with it properly. Absolute load of tripe. Dogs are fickle, okay? If I hand this little guy here over to one of my other trainers or someone else, or his owners come and visit, he's all over them like a rash, he loves them dearly. And within a month or so, he's completely forgotten about me. Not completely, but he's forgotten about me and he's moved on to bigger and bigger and better things. So so the 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 stuff you hear that, you know, says that you've got a that first four weeks with your dog is vital, it's an absolute load of cod's wallop. Okay, these people who are saying all this stuff, I actually don't think they know anything about dogs. And I know that may sound really arrogant of me, okay? But I'm just getting quite infuriated with the sort of dross that I hear and people tell me, oh, someone told me this and someone told me that. If you see someone out in the park with a load of really well-behaved dogs and then you just think, and you see them regularly and you're like, why, that person really knows their stuff. Go and pick their brains because they know what they're doing. If someone just puts an advert up saying, oh, I'm a dog trainer, Go and see their credentials, and I don't mean on paper because there is no regulatory body governing dog trainers, okay? I have no qualifications. My qualification is the proof is in the pudding. I've been doing it for 20 years and we've trained thousands and thousands of dogs. So hopefully most of them pretty successfully. So if you're gonna go to a class or something, which is great and you need, because you need some help, go and see the trainer's dogs. Go and see how good they are. Ask to go for a walk with them in a park and let them, let them have their dogs off the lead and and uh, coming back when they're called and not terrorizing other people and ducks and chickens and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, think about it in the same way as you would go and look at a builder's work before you employed him as your builder. And if your lawyer made a mistake on the last house you bought, you probably won't use him again. You might get a new one. So just put some thought into it. Anyway, rant over. Let's move on with Waffle. The old, the old saying, if you can't run, if you can't walk, don't run. With dogs, if you can't stand, 
don't try and walk. And if you can't stand with him with a loose lead and him in a calm way, you shouldn't be trying to walk. If you can't walk, don't try and run. Take it one step at a time and don't be shy of always backtracking. If he starts getting it wrong, we just backtrack and we make sure he gets it right. Consistency is the key. He's being a bit of a monkey. We've got some other people ahead having a lesson. So this might not be a time to let him off the lead because what's going to happen if I let him off the lead? Well, there's a strong chance he's going to run off and see them because he's ready to go this morning, okay? And if he doesn't catch up with them, the ducks are on the pond and they're quite fun as well. So when they're in that kind of like, yeah, what's going on? And they're looking for trouble. That's a time to keep it calm, keep it on a lead. When they're being all like, oh, daddy, can I come out with you? Can I behave? Can I be good? That's the time to push them a little bit. So think about that. Don't just go out with a set routine. Oh, this is what I do every day. Change it, vary it, depending on what's, what's happening, depending on the dog's attitude, depending on your mood. Because if you're in a bad mood and your dog, you're setting yourself up for your dog to do something wrong, you're going to get in a more of a bad mood and then your bond with the dog's going to break down. So just think, you know, God, I'm tired. I've been working too much. I've been partying too much, whatever it is. So I'm just going to keep it simple. Heel. Heel. So we're just trying to keep that lead loose all the time. Now I'm watching him all the time. So I'm keeping that lead loose. Every time he goes to tug, goes to pull, I give him a little tug. Sit. Sit. Every time I stop, I ask him to sit. I get him to look at me. Ah, ah, ah. Sit. Heel. Just watching the ducks on the pond. What you've got to be really careful is that you're reading the dog's body language, okay? If a dog just looks at a duck and goes, oh, look, there's the ducks, but he stands there calmly and he behaves, that's fine. If he looks at the ducks and he's like, oh, if I wasn't on this lead, I'd be getting them, then you've got to correct him. You've got to say, whatever you're thinking, little man, no, absolutely not. That's not allowed. Correcting the thought is easier than correcting the action, and correcting the action is easier than correcting what has already happened. Okay, so thought pro to correct their thought process, that's number one. If you can do that, you're on a winner. The next thing is if they're actually doing it wrong. So if I drop the lead and he starts heading for the ducks, I need to get hold of him before he gets the ducks, okay? Now I have seen myself jumping into this pond, fully clothed after a dog that's come for a lesson. And my word, they look at you and they go, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. And they never do it again, just because of the shock of me jumping into the water. They're like, oh my God, and that's just commitment. I'm not expecting you all to be as quite obsessed by it as me, but I'm just giving you an example. So we're, first of all, if he looks at them with intent, we're saying no, correction. We're looking at him, we're saying absolutely not. Don't even think about chasing those ducks. If he, if he missed that opportunity and he starts to chase the ducks, we've got to get there. We've got to use our legs. We've got to Usain Bolt our way after him, okay? We've got to be there quicker than Jack Flash. Get hold of him in any which way you can just to prevent the problem. There's no point standing here calling a co young untrained dog when they're flying across a pond chasing ducks. They're not going to come back, okay? You either do something about it or by going in there, you do something about it by running away or you just keep your fingers crossed and hope the ducks fly off. And then the, the, the final one is if actually he catches, we, we get to him and he's already got a duck and he's got it pinned to the ground, we get it off him, we get him back, probably by the scruff of his neck as quickly as possible. He's got to know that that's wrong. This whole concept of, oh, if they do something wrong, we just ignore them. Nobody does that. If someone does something wrong in human society, we don't just ignore them. We pull them up for it. We take them to court. We put them in jail. We fine them, whatever the situation is. We've got to do the same with the dog. And the level of correction depends on the level of, the level of punishment correction depends on the level of uh, naughtiness, basically. If, you know, if you're going five miles an hour over the speed limit, you know, it's not that serious. You know, you're going to be you get a few points and you'll get over it. But if you're doing 120 the wrong way down the motorway, you're probably going to get a jail, and rightly so. So it's kind of the same with the dog. If he just looks at a duck and with a little bit of intent, I'm like, ah, 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 leave it alone. If he's chasing a duck and he's about to kill it, I'll jump on him and get hold of him because I need to do that. Heel. Now, we're always thinking about all the manners and all the basic stuff all the time. So we get to a gate, okay? He goes to pull through. So we shut the gate, we make him wait, we open the gate, we shut the gate. We might even walk back over there, come back, open the gate again. Rep repetition is the key, okay? Repeat it, repeat it. Repeat the right thing though, don't repeat the wrong thing. Don't keep repeating the wrong thing because that's obviously doesn't make any sense at all. Keep repeating the right thing. Waffle, waffle. 
get his eye contact, and then boo, on we go. So he's done a bit of healing on the lead. Not, not that well, to be honest. He's not doing very well today. He's having a bit of, say, a, bit of a naughty day. We sat and looked at the ducks. Um, he's waited at the gate. Again, he tried to push through. So we're having, you know, he's definitely he's fighting against me a little bit today. I'm not getting annoyed with him. I'm just repeating things. I'm just staying calm, staying in control and going, well, if that's what you're going to do, we're just going to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. Sit up. Now, I maybe sometimes, you know, if they're, if they're being a bit silly, sometimes we just need to get their focus. They're just not on, they're not really with us in the same way we want them to be. So I'm going to let him retrieve a ball, but I'm going to leave the lead attached to him just because that's giving me a little, a little bit of, um, a little bit of a safety net. Good boy, good man. You're a big man, making a big fuss of him. What a good boy. Waffle, waffle, come here. And then you see he's being a bit naughty. Okay, so I get after him. Bring him back. Deal with it. I'm physically doing something about it. You've got to go over there and correct him, okay? Because if we let him get away with it, he's just going to keep doing it. He's going to further and further. You keep shouting at him. He keeps ignoring you. You're undermining your authority. You're undermining your command. The whole thing's just gone down the loo. You. Now, because I've done that one retrieve with him, he's sitting a bit sharper. He's looking at me. He's like, oh, I might get another retrieve. So I've got him on side a little bit again. Just winning him round in a way, showing him that, you know, this can be fun. He can be working for me. So I'm going to leave him attached to the long line, but I'm going to let him have a little bit of a run around, the lead rather, let him have a bit of a run around. Come on, Waffle. Come on then. And I'm just starting to teach him to follow my hand signals. So if I walk to the right, I put my hand out to the right and he comes with me. If I walk to the left, I put my hand out to the left and he comes with me. And if I want to, if I want to leave, I just run away. We'll call him. Good boy. So, just just to sort of summarise, Waffle is still progressing in a nice way. Okay, he's still a good, going to be a good little dog. He's still reasonably attentive, but he's having a bad day. So what? Doesn't matter. We just go through some basic obedience, basic things. Keep it simple. Don't put him in an environment where he's going to, where he might get it wrong because he is going to get it wrong when he's in this frame of mind. Don't be shy of just going back and doing something over again because. A, Training dogs, and young dogs especially, is about repeating it over and over and over again. Think of when you were at school and you learned times tables. You didn't just do one lesson of it, you did years of it. You repeated it every time you went to your maths class. You went over it. You know, I still remember it from 20, 30, God, I don't even know, 40 years later or whenever it was. Because it was just ingrained in my mind and that's what we're trying to do with the dog. I hope you've all enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and remember, you get out what you put in.